Okay, this video is going to cover how to use equations for, for constant velocity to solve for the motion of an object. So we're going to talk about the equations, we're going to talk about where they come from, and then we'll, we're going to learn something called the guess method. It's a regular way to go through problems and identify information so that you can solve a problem with that information. So, um, Here's what we have right now. We have some definitions, right? And so these are these are these are going to be important to our equations. One of them is that speed is distance traveled over time. Now we get an equation from this. That equation is that average speed is the distance traveled over time. Sometimes we're going to need that. Uh, the other definition that we have is that velocity is displacement over time. So the equation we get from this is that velocity is displacement over time. Now, one of the things that we're going to need to help us out when we're looking at displacement, because we have that change in, that change in position is the final position minus the initial position. The other definition that we have for velocity, kind of a sub-definition, velocity is the slope of a position versus time graph. So what we can do with that information, knowing that it's the slope of a position versus time graph, if I have a position versus time graph that looks like this, let me draw in our position versus time, that's a straight line graph. And so every time we have a straight line graph, we know from math we know from math that y equals mx plus b. But for this graph, things change, right? All of our y values, we're going to call x for position. All of our x values are time. And by definition, the slope is the velocity. And then our y-intercept, that's this right here, that's our starting position, or our initial position. So from this graph, we can get a physics equation. We want to move beyond the math equation. It's true, it's just that each of these things has a physical definition. So our physics equation is that the final position is equal to um, the slope, velocity, times time, plus the initial position. So for the work that we're going to do in this unit, these are the formulas that we're going to use. Speed is distance traveled over time. Velocity is displacement over time. Change in position is x final minus x initial. And then x final is velocity times time plus um, the initial position. These are the equations that we're going to work with. So when we're solving problems, I want us to use something that we call the guess method. And so the guess method is just a way to read through um, word problems. So the G in the guess method is for the givens, the given information in the problem. So our first step is to identify the givens. That's first step. to identify the given information. 
The U is for unknowns. Identify the unknown or wanted quantity. So if a problem says solve for the time, your unknown quantity is the time. E is for equations. And this really is, I think, the hardest part of the whole guess method. What you want to do with E for equations is pick, pick the equations with only your givens and your unknowns in it. You have to pick the appropriate equation. S is going to be um, substitute. Here, what you're going to do, you're going to add the numbers, you're going to add the values to the equation, and then the last S is solve. Step five is solve for the unknown variable. Those are the steps that we're going to use when we're solving a problem. So let's, let's do an example problem real quick. So here's our sample equation, or sorry, sample problem. If you travel for If you travel for three hours at 30 kilometers per hour, how far will you go? So there's our question. So what we want to do is first identify our given information. Here's what we're going to do for given information. We're going to underline it. We're going to have given information. We're going to underline, in this case, in green. So if you travel for three hours at 30 kilometers per hour, that's our given information. What I think would be useful is to identify it. Three hours, I can tell by the unit here that I'm talking about time. So that given information is that time is equal to three hours. That's my given information. At 30 kilometers per hour, the unit there, kilometers per hour, is a, dis a unit of distance over time. That's going to be our velocity. Velocity is 30 kilometers an hour. The next thing that we want to do is identify our unknowns. So for unknowns, we're going we're gonna to circle that thing in blue. So for our unknowns, that's how far will you go? How far will you go is a displacement. So that unknown is our delta x. How far? And that's unknown. So now we have identified our knowns and our unknown. We can do our problem now. I'm going to rewrite these things and I encourage you to do them as well. It's going to help when we pick an equation. Uh, the velocity is 30 kilometers an hour. The time is three hours. And the delta x, we don't know. So what we want to do is find an equation that has velocity, time, and delta x in it. So we're going to go up here to all these highlighted equations. And we want velocity. Okay, well, this one has velocity and this one has velocity, time, that has time, this has time, and then delta x. Well, that's this one. So the equation that we're going to use is velocity is equal to delta x over time. The next step is to substitute in our numbers. Well, the velocity is 30 kilometers an hour. 
we don't know the delta x, so we're going to leave it like that. And then the time is 3 hours. So now what we're going to do is solve that equation for delta x. I want delta x by itself. That's the whole goal of solving. So I'm going to multiply by 3 hours on each side. And that's going to make these 3 hours go away. So my equation is now 3 hours times 30 kilometers per hour is equal to delta x. So I can multiply these two things together. 3 times 30 is 90. Hours on top crosses out with hours on bottom. So 90 kilometers is equal to delta x. I have solved my equation. Let's do one more example just so that we feel a little bit better about this. Uh, a dog walks from a position three meters behind the origin to a final position five meters in front of the origin. What was its velocity for the trip? That's our question. So for this, we're going to take and we're going to underline in green all of our given inform. Oh wait, I left off one piece of information, and I'm sorry about that. And it did all this in do 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 do, do two seconds. Sorry, what was its velocity? Now we can do our givens. So the first one is from a position of three meters behind the origin to a final position of five meters in front of the origin in two seconds. Those are our three pieces of given information. Now. Here it says, from a position. All of this needs to be a clue to you that we are starting three meters behind the origin. That means my initial position is negative three meters. And so just, just as a helpful thing, behind the origin means we have negative position and then from usually means initial. That's a helpful piece. We need to know what our initial position is. From a position means it's telling me that's where we start. To a final position of five meters in front of the origin, well that's easy final position is equal to 5 meters, and since it's in front, that's going to be positive. And then in 2 seconds. Seconds is time, so this is telling me my time. And then I want to know what was its velocity, so my unknown is velocity. So now we've, we've found that information in our problem. We're going to go through and write all that down now. And so the initial position is negative three meters. The final position is five meters. The time is two seconds and the velocity is our unknown. So what we need to do is find an equation with those things in it. We're going to go up. I'm going to look at our equations. We have initial position. So that could be this or this. We have velocity, I'm sorry, yeah, we're looking for velocity, so it could be one of these. We have the time, and we have the final position. So this equation here, 
looks like the one that we're going to use. So let's choose it. So the final position is equal to the um, velocity times time plus the initial position. I'm going to plug in my numbers. So 5 meters is equal to velocity, which we don't know, so we're going to leave it like a V, times 2 seconds plus the initial position. Is that backward? Yeah, plus the initial position, which is negative 3 meters. So if I want to clean that up, I've got 5 is equal to 2V minus 3. And I want to go ahead and solve that for V. So the first thing I want to do is move the thing with the, the plus or minus sign. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides. Because negative 3 plus 3 is 0, I'm going to get 3 plus 5. So 8 is equal to 2V. I want to solve for v, so I'm going to divide by 2 and divide by 2, and so v comes out to be 4 meters per second, and that's the dog's velocity for that motion, 4 meters per second.